it, so call me back. Okay, I love you. Beautiful. What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Emotionally Online, the show for spilling guts and sharing secrets. Hosted by yours truly, the one and only Maddie Drosbeck. And today we're hitting you live from York Beach, Maine, baby. We're a few rum punches deep and we're here to talk <laughs> about who knows what, baby. Oh I've got submissions pulled out and we've got Love Island finale to talk about. And we've got words Okay. Dame. <laughs> Go dame. <laughs> but before I dive into all these words, let's introduce our guests for today's episode. We've got two returning emotionally online favorites, Jordan and Haley. Hi. And then Hi, we've babes. got a new lad to introduce to the emotionally online cinematic universe vibes. It's story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all sound like a dinosaur. <laughs> I'm the guest dinosaur. <laughs> I'm surprised we're even recording this right now. Yeah. Get ready, buckle in, babes. It's honestly, when we were out to dinner, I was like, the podcast isn't happening. I knew but it But here would. we are. The podcast is somehow against all that's happening. I knew. It had to for y'all. I didn't think it was. I thought that I was going to get home and be like, no shot. We're doing this tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm going to do it by myself, laying in bed at 3 a.m. Absolutely not. By the but power, here we are. By the power of Twee <laughs> and George W. Bush. Yeah. Yeah, by the power of... <laughs> We are here. <laughs> George W. Bush jokingly. <laughs> By the power of Tweet and George W. Bush. <laughs> the restaurant we went to tonight is a, a the Bushes love it, allegedly. allegedly. He's on the wall in the restaurant. Yeah, with Bill Clinton. <laughs> There's a picture of Bill Clinton and George, the, George Sr. Senior. We will get on that wall and replace him. <laughs> Crossing the party I guess we're lines political, yeah. with lobster. <laughs> yeah, that, I guess we're getting political. political. If that doesn't tell you all you need to know about politics, <laughs> then I don't know what will. <laughs> so here we are, just four lads with beef with the British public. Yeah, Some and a little bit us. of rum in our system. <laughs> yeah. So before we get into actually like the juice. The real juice, the juice that you came here for. We've got a question that I wasn't planning on asking this episode. I really wasn't meant to be a question that I ask everyone, but I've been requested to pose this topic to the group by story. Yes. Because <laughs> story's got words. I have my words. So we're bringing back the dick and cock debate. The great dick and cock debate, Thank as God. some would say. Sucking dick and cock, and you did it at Every my birthday, birthday. dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Jersey quote? Is that a Jersey quote? Haley just said it. I can't even believe that. that Who just is that? The audience. Is that a Tati oh Westbrook and James Charles? And you did it at my birthday Sucking dinner. dick and cock. Right in front of my salad. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> There's no way. There's no <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. It went right past me. You've sorry, got, James Charles. Well, you've got to go do catch up on the drama get in lore Charles. from 20. Should I do a public apology right here? Yeah. Do you have a ukulele? Yeah. Where were you during drama get in? <laughs> <laughs> so the question is I'm ready. During sex, during dirty talk, what is the preference to say dick or cock and cock. why? Cock. Immediately okay. cock. This is another point for Team Cock. I'm also on Team Cock. I know you're on Team Cock because I've listened to every episode. <laughs> dick is just like like you're a dickhead like it's like colloquial it's like yeah. we all use it in like like every day-to-day -day life but like cock is like that's cock. like a i will start saying knob now in the bedroom <laughs> no bed <laughs> give me your hard knob hard knob <laughs> give thanks. me your hard knob thanks mitch i don't think i've ever said dick or cock like in the bedroom but like sexting i always <laughs> yeah. use the word cock always cock it's definitely more rare i've for sure said it in the bedroom but it's like how often do you actually say that mm. as opposed to just saying you yeah yeah i rarely use the proper noun <laughs> right <laughs> right yeah yeah, like, yeah 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 he's yeah, not like yeah. put your cock inside me babes he who <laughs> shall not be named inside me <laughs> he who 
shall not be named. See, what Haley said last time it's a, to me where you were like, I have to be really inspired yeah. to say it. No, that's, that's fair. I, yeah. I don't think you can... It's not a casual thing. I have to be like no. really in the moment. Really. Or I'll be honest. This is maybe not. I think I have to be either A, really in the moment or B, run out of things to say. <laughs> and then I just start saying the craziest shit my yeah. brain can think of. Or like and really And in those depraved. cases, I will probably use those words more often. <laughs> or like really depraved, like so horny. Like yeah, yeah, I'm- yeah. Cause it just like hits harder. Yeah. yeah. It, it, like if you asked me how many times I've, I've said either one of those things in bed, I couldn't tell you. And probably, probably because the times that I have said it, I've, <laughs> I've been so It horny. takes you I, out of it. Yeah. I've been out of my mind. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. But if I was like, what's sexier dick or cock? Cock is way sexier. Yes. I agree. Yes. It's just like sexier. See, but I think this is interesting that so many people that I've asked this have echoed similar thoughts because every time I've seen this online, people are like, cock is crazy. <laughs> I would never say cock. What the fuck do I look like? Those are uh, kink shamers. Like, those are people who aren't. And they're isn't that the fucking truth. virgin. You know, I learned something about myself <laughs> recently. I never considered that this might be like a kink of mine. I don't, I'm still exploring what this means for me. Okay. I think I have a breeding kink. <laughs> okay. Like you yeah. want to be inseminated? Well, no, I don't. Here's the thing. I do not want children and I don't <laughs> want someone to in practice come inside me. But the thought of it and also in porn, this is what I've been searching uh-huh. up for the last month is breeding point wait, wait in yeah. practice people don't come inside of you uh, i have too much anxiety for that oh okay also i've never been in a long-term relationship so i'm like who 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 yeah. whose business do okay. i have coming inside me i don't know why i think it's so hot but i think like the idea of someone <laughs> wanting to make me pregnant yes that does something for me uh-huh i literally even should. though i don't want to be it's your animal and in yeah. practice i wouldn't do it Tendencies. but i I, I, I feel, I don't know. This is what I want to watch in porn. I really just think it's primal because I, I feel yeah. the exact same way. I, I agree with you. Nothing scares me more than the idea of being pregnant. Yeah. Um, but there is something really sexy about it. Right. And I, Compa, isn't it? I can't explain it. But Cream compa. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I am a woman. And there is something <laughs> in my brain that says I must bear children. Even though the practical brain says, mm-hmm. absolutely no. Yeah. Do not want that. Yeah. So it's settled. Cock, it Co- is. Cock is hotter. Dick right now, the data is showing that cock is the preferred word. Yeah. But we're We've skewed, only right? surveyed, what is it, seven people total on this podcast? Seven about yes. like hot people. The data is skewed. It's true. But you have We to- all live in the city. Okay, now this is some real conspiracy theories that are brewing here. New Yorkers <laughs> prefer the word cock is the go. thesis statement I'm City getting. City cock versus country <laughs> dick. <laughs> City cock, country dick. Yeah, that's true. Do you think? I think. Well, we need to, I think we need to pull yeah, some we need country. To, we need to like some bumpkins. In the, in, the, in, in, the, in the description of this episode, there will be a link to a survey to complete. Yes. A survey <laughs> monkey where you can let me know. Yes, <laughs> What's your area code? Well, yeah, where do you or live? <laughs> what's your social security? Or area? I don't need your reasoning. Just comment dick or cock below. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we'll, ca- we'll count flood them up. the comments. Do we'll not count say a single other thing other than dick or cock. <laughs> yeah. And then oh. thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up the ones that you like, and we'll see who wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easier way to do it. No survey monkeys. I, I love it. Right when we, got, <laughs> right when we got here, <laughs> story said something. I said, I can't believe people are hitting me up from work right now. I'm on PTO. I'm taking this pussy to the ocean. <laughs> Which is right. so true. And people aren't talking about it enough. Yeah. And then we went to a restaurant last night. Which I've eaten there literally my whole life. Boxes. <laughs> and their slogan <laughs> is, one nibble on the nubble and you're hooked. Uh-huh, so and true. I had never considered like how how absolutely like motorboat coded that <laughs> that slogan is <laughs> like foxes is full of boob people it's an yeah. innuendo. and yeah. we know it for sure now the nubble lighthouse 
guys horny what were yeah. they thinking horny that's so close nubble nibble <laughs> nipple nipple <laughs> it's just nubs it's like an anamorph of words mm-hmm. yeah to get you where you really need to be I mean, a lighthouse is often a phallic object, so I like that it's this being reclaimed true. for the ladies. Yes. This yeah. is true. It has nothing to do with lobsters. But also, what do they call when your nipples are really hard in a shirt? They call it... Rock Don't hard. they call the headlights? Oh, yeah, So yeah. that's sort of like a lighthouse. <laughs> yeah, a lighthouse is just a hard nipple. A lighthouse is just a hard nipple. Lead us home. So before we get into talking about Love Island... Which there's truly so much to say. So much to unpack. I have pulled a few submissions from the question box. If you don't know, there is a question box for the show. You can submit your drama, your requests for advice. Are you the asshole? Is your friend the asshole? Literally anything you want to share. What happens at the sleepover stays at the sleepover. And I love reading all of your deepest, darkest secrets. So with that being said, let's just get right into one. Hello, Maddie. I absolutely love your videos and your ability to inspire me to be creative, which I have been struggling with for a while. To add context here, I am 20 years old and have never been in a romantic relationship before or have had any ounce of romantic interest, gestures, etc. I am not a party girl who doesn't enjoy clubs, drinking, and hookups. My friends think it's sad that I have never had a boyfriend as they are all playing the field. Every time I go out with them and we meet new people, they make it known that I don't go out and have never had a boyfriend and all I get are sympathetic reactions. And I get too many questions, which makes me cringe and incredibly uncomfortable. I am made to feel like a loser who is isolated and not normal, even though I am happily content with the healthy and positive lifestyle that I've created for myself. Do friends really do this to one another and should I cut them out of my life? No, they fucking do not. To your friends, girly. No. They don't. (laughs) I would not jump to cutting them out as a first step. I would jump to calling them out for it as a first step. Yeah. You need to bring this up because that's not okay. And friends don't treat each other like that. No. Period. No. Friends do not treat each other like that. Yeah. I think it's fair not to jump to conclusions, but also like I'm, I'm 27 and I've never been in a relationship. My friends have never treated me that way. Neither have I. It's, it's it's wild that anybody would because also the it thing is like, that it's not uncommon. No, it sounds like you're all. confident in yourself and they're trying to pick at that in some yeah. sort of way. Well, it's just projection because yeah. it's like pe- yes. people that are secure yeah. in themselves and that are happy with the decisions that they made don't look at other people that have made different decisions and feel the need to yeah. bully and belittle them like that. Exactly. Like if your friends felt comfortable with the decisions that they've made to be in those relationships that they've been in, they would not feel the need to look at you and make fun of you for choosing not to or not having found a person at this point so far. So all that tells me about your friends is that they probably have some type of insecurity or like self doubt within themselves for some of the relationships that they've been in. And in order to make themselves feel better, they have to make fun of people that are single or haven't been in relationships and put themselves on a pedestal above. Exactly. Yeah. If they're trying to wingman you, they're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can talk to them and say, I would actually love for you to wingman me. Like this would be great because it is, it's fun to have your friends involved in your dating life like that. Um, but this is not the way to go about it. Um, if that's what you want also, if that's what you want. My thing is like, if your friends are truly just fucking like haters that are bullying you for being single, which is bizarre in the first place. Um, and also would make me very nervous for your friends or like, okay, so what would they rather be in a relationship with a shitty fucking person and single because it's so <laughs> horrible to them? Like, that's embarrassing to me. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like, I don't understand why people are like so comfortable being like, I don't know, making fun of single people like that because when I they just have think a it, horrible boyfriend. It reflects poorly yeah. on them. I don't, I don't get it at all. Yeah. If your friends genuinely are like shitty people that see the world like that, I don't know that I would personally want to be friends with them. But if this is a situation of like maybe they are saying things that they don't understand is hurtful or if they're unintentionally mm-hmm. saying weird things that maybe they are not perceiving in the same way that you are, I think it'd be worth having a conversation about. I think if I were in your position, I would pick one one person that I feel the most comfortable around or that I think is probably the least involved in this kind of behavior 
open up to them Mm -hmm. and hope that I can sort of connect with them about it, get them on my, uh, on the same wavelength as me and then see if they can sort of help bring the whole group into acknowledgement that this is hurting your feelings. Yeah. Cause it's possible. I mean, I don't know exactly what's being said or what's going on here. It's very possible that it could be unintentional, but yeah, it's, it's either like you solve it with a conversation and calling it out or these people genuinely are just fucking assholes. And in which case you don't want to be friends with them anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Just distance yourself from them. If you can't have, if you like are scared or can't have a conversation with them, like, if you don't feel comfortable having a conversation with any of them because they're all scary, I would just like distance myself from them yeah. like a little bit and maybe tell them a little bit why. Be like, oh, I was uncomfortable with some of the things you were saying, but like, that's but cr- no one should make you feel bad no. about that ever. Like, oh my God, that's crazy to make you feel bad about that. I like, think if anything, this would make me want to like pursue new friendships with people that do understand what it's like to have been single for long periods of time in adulthood. I, yeah, cause it it is nice to have people close to you that understand that and understand how weird that people can be because of that. But yeah, I don't know. It's bizarre. Some people are fucking weird about it. It's definitely not sad. If you haven't met the right person, you haven't met the right person, babes. I don't know. That's bizarre. Your friends are weird. Yeah, your friends being invested, <laughs> being so, like, caring so much about your dating status is fucking weird. And they should just care about you and if you're happy. It's also weird to bring it up in public settings with, like, people that you don't know. Yeah, that's so yeah. crazy. And the way this seems like a reoccurring issue. Yeah. I would be really upset if my friends were telling absolute strangers the yeah. intimacies mm-hmm. of my dating life yeah i would yeah. spend less time with those people that's so weird i i would be so hurt by that mm-hmm. yeah you don't deserve that you do not no matter who you are you don't deserve that right so to answer your question friends don't do that no friends don't do that <laughs> tldr <laughs> tldr friends friends do listening? not do that friends if you're listening. stay away <laughs> Friends, if you're listening, don't do that. Hello, Maddie. I'd first like to say I love your content and deeply appreciate the slumber party vibes you cultivate through your online community. Listening to the podcast is one of my favorite moments every week. Recently, my best friend slash roommate of going on five years told me that she doesn't like my girlfriend. She's been really harsh and judgmental about her and says things that I really don't appreciate, such as that she finds my girlfriend's voice annoying and that she's just too much. Ha! She's polite to my girlfriend's face, but she doesn't even hesitate to complain about her to me or tell me unprompted that she doesn't see us as a match. This is all really hard to hear and understand because I feel the most myself when I'm with my girlfriend. Our relationship is so healthy and supportive, and I'm hoping to have a future with her. I understand that sometimes people's personalities don't vibe well, but she's made her dislike for my girlfriend seem so extreme. It feels like I can't even invite my girlfriend over or FaceTime her without my best friend being irritated. I've been struggling to understand why it bothers me so much that my bestie doesn't like her, and I think I've realized that if my best friend doesn't like the person who feels like home to me, it feels like she can't possibly like me either. It feels like my best friend doesn't recognize me and or that I'm outgrowing our friendship I could use advice on how to set some boundaries with her and navigate whether this is a friendship that is good for me or can be improved we do also have a lease together for the next year which does complicate this a little bit thank you for your advice yeah I think my my gut reaction to this was just I really To be in the position of a best friend that doesn't like your best friend's partner is difficult. However, if you're in that position, you've usually got some like valid points to share. Mm -hmm. Your partner having an annoying voice and being too much are not valid points. Mm -hmm. Those are not reasons to not like someone. Mm -hmm. Those are not reasons to be mean to someone. That is petty middle school bullshit. That is wild to me. If my best friend ever said anything like that to me i'd be like who are you because it just seems wild that an adult would say something like that and think it was like a valid thing to share it sounds like they're jealous of you i would say little partner i think like the question is is like are there other 
things that your partner, other other valid things that your best friend has to say about your partner, or it, are, are literally annoying voice. Wait, what was the other one? Like, there's another too much, too annoying voice, and too much, quote unquote, too much and annoying voice. The only like the biggest issues they have with them because I really, those are insane things to say. Period. Those, like, if I was genuinely concerned with the relationship that one of my friends was in, you wouldn't hear me make no. a point like they have an annoying no. voice because that seems to like delegitimize any claims that you have that are actually like serious. Exactly. Like, as your friend, I'm worried that this might not be the right or the best fit for you yeah. which is like that's a conversation that a lot of people have but annoying voice and too much yeah. that doesn't read to me like that's someone that is like really like i'm looking out for my best friend's best interest that reads to me as something completely different and I'm, as someone who thinks that a lot of people have an annoying voice i rarely <laughs> ever say that i rarely ever say that because it's not a good point for a reason like i i be i believe that a lot of people have annoying voices <laughs> But it's not a good reason to say that that's not a good fit for your friend. Now I'm curious about your relationship with your best friend. Like, yeah. do you guys regularly talk about other people like that? Like, is that language that you mm -hmm. use to describe people usually? Yeah. Do you guys talk about other people and hate on them because they have an annoying voice and they're too much? Or is this something that is totally out of character for this mm -hmm. friend of yours and your friendship? Good because question. that would add more, more color to this. Because, like, for me... I don't know anybody that would be like, I don't know, just going around being like this person that you're friends with or that you're dating that you know, I hate them, don't bring them around here because they have an annoying voice. That well, seems you know wild. Me, yeah. Well, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not actually like that. No, I would never say that. I just, I just genuinely do think people have annoying voices. But I would never, that's not a reason to not like someone. Like I like no. people who have annoying voices. They have good person, sometimes have good personalities. <laughs> You're oh. fucking killing me right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but like... Uh, I don't think the annoying voice is the problem. Something deeper is yeah. going on with your yeah. best friend and with you. Like maybe they're jealous of you. Yeah. Maybe they're jealous of your best friend. Maybe they like you. And, and if they're your best friend, you should be able to have a genuine conversation yes. with them about exactly. what is actually the problem here. Maybe there is a bit of a rivalry. Maybe there is jealousy about how you're splitting your time or where your yeah. priorities lie. But if, if they are truly your best friend and yeah. if this is truly a partner you see a, a future with, you should be able to talk to both of these people in a mature fashion to get to the root of what is actually going on here. And both of these people should care to have a conversation about that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Annoying voice is not. <laughs> Never. No. But also, no. that would just, like, piss me off. Like, yeah. if someone that I mm -hmm. was close to started speaking about someone that I love like that, yeah. that would make me not want to be friends with them. Yeah. Like, okay. I, don't, I don't appreciate when people speak about people that I love like that. That, to me, is, like, a... That's a hard line. Yeah, I agree. You're not just going to, like, randomly shit talk people that I love with, like, no basis for it. So I don't know, maybe you are outgrowing this friendship. Um, That's possible. It's possible that you guys are just not the same people that you once were when your friendship was starting. But I would, I, I always hope that there is like some type of explanation for it and perhaps your friend is just not like it's already been said, but it, it, maybe your friend is just not great at communicating that they feel like neglected mm -hmm. in your friendship that your relationship has taken priority or something like that and instead they are just like being a fucking hater for no reason yeah i don't know i i hope there's a way to talk that out and figure it out i personally would feel really uncomfortable with someone i love speaking like that about someone else that i love um and i yeah i just hope that you're able to find a comfortable middle ground to that or that you're able to move past and grow past this friendship if it turns out that it's no longer serving you i'll also say like if you feel most yourself when you're with your partner like that's beautiful and like that's okay and it's okay for you to like feel comfortable in that space and want to spend more time with them and like if you're not feeling like yourself or feeling safe with your friend because they're feeling this way like that's a conversation that you need to have and like maybe it is like this converse this relationship is you're outgrowing each other yeah mm -hmm. i've been in that situation before and it's really really hard 
and really and friendships have ended that way but also like in that in, in that place in my life I like needed to feel like myself and I needed to feel comfortable and that was with my partner yeah and that got me through a hard place in my life and some and friendships end and it's really really hard yeah but like if you're if you have someone that you feel like yourself with and you feel like you're growing as a person and you feel like like my my the self that I am right now is comfortable with th- with this person who is my partner like that's beautiful yeah and you should and you should feel like okay and feel safe and feel like validated in that and that's that's your reality right then there's that's also okay. like lines when you care about someone mm-hmm. where it's like everyone at some point has been or will be in a situation where they are not the biggest fan of somebody's partner that they're close to. That's normal. A lot of people go through that. But I think that there's like a line with which you're, you should be like sharing those feelings. And I'm right now speaking as if you have like valid concerns. Like maybe this friend does have valid criticisms of this relationship beyond just you have an annoying voice and you're too much. But also when you're in the position of the friend and I'm giving them like the major benefit of the doubt right now, but it's like when you're in that position as a friend, the right thing to do is to share your grievances or your thoughts in a mature and productive way, have a conversation about it and then move the fuck on. Because at some point you start driving a wedge between you and your friend because Mm -hmm. you are so dead set on hating this partner. Mm -hmm. Assuming that it's not like a super toxic relationship and it's just you being like, I don't like this person Mm -hmm. for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. or I don't think they're the best match. I think Mm -hmm. you could be with someone better. At some point you have to say, you know what? I've said my piece and now my job is just to be a friend and be supportive. And I think if you can't give your feedback constructively and if you can't like voice it in a way that's not just like, your your partner has an annoying voice and they're quote unquote too much if you can't do that you just need to be supportive you need to if they come to you with like oh my partner is being really frust like like doing this thing you're like that sounds really frustrating be supportive like if you can't give your feedback in a way that is constructive and is like real and is not just like petty like they have an annoying voice then you just need to be supportive and just like reinforce that and that person your friend will come to that conclusion on their own and you need to let that happen so that you don't jeopardize your friendship it sounds like your friend is jeopardizing their friendship your friendship over petty things right and the reason why i oh it's just so hard because like i i've never said any of the shit that your friend is saying i've never said anything petty like that but there's definitely been like friends where i really didn't I wasn't a big fan of their partner and looking back in hindsight now, I think I went way too hard in like communicating that I wasn't the biggest fan and there were like periods of regret that I felt after the fact because I realized that it was like, number one, it doesn't fucking matter what my opinion is to like a certain point. Of course I want the best for the people that I love and I want them to be in relationships that they are like totally and completely seen and appreciated by. But at the end of the day, I do not know better than they do. If they are telling me that this person is great for them and makes them feel good, at some point as a friend, you have to say, I trust you. You know better than I do and have to like take your ego to the side a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I get it. It can be difficult, but at some point you have to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, is this worth losing a friend over? Mm -hmm. And it's usually not. So agreed. grow up. Sorry. (laughs) Speaking to your friend now, that's never going to listen to this. Yeah. But I'm like, it frustrates me because I, I like get it. And I've felt that frustrating way about friends, partners before, but sometimes it does come down to like your own ego and you're just sort of like, I don't know, putting your own opinion on a platform. It's like, maybe you're wrong. Cause I think I was wrong, but it's hard to know that in the moment when you're like, it all comes from a place of love. You just want the best for your friend. Send this up to your friend. Yeah. Send this up to your friend deeply, truly. And honestly, all I can think of right now, is Solange beating Jay-Z's ass in the elevator. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a great parallel. It is. Yeah. We all related to Solange in that yeah. moment. That's beautiful. You know what? Jay-Z's still with Beyonce. Beyonce's still with Jay-Z. Beyonce's still friends with right. her sister. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they talked it out after the totally. elevator. There's there's ways to like share how you feel as a friend, <laughs> but also know when it's time to like shut the fuck up and move on. 
Yeah. And I think like you can move on from this moment with your friend and you can like move forward with your partner. Like yeah. you can all move forward from this. Yes. And I also think it's okay if either one of these ends. Like mm-hmm. you're going to be okay either way. Or you have to brawl in an elevator <laughs> or that the final boss of this moment on the way to Lebane. Yeah. To brawl in an elevator. And you have to make sure it's recorded. <laughs> And send it to TMZ. <laughs> and whoever looks the best coming out of the elevator is the winner. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been tracking my finances the old-fashioned way for a while now. I've had a big Google spreadsheet that I manually input all of my expenses and income into. And that has worked un- until it didn't anymore. It's really time consuming to manually input every single expense that I have and categorize them. And overall, it can just be a little bit uh, unorganized uh, in a messy way to manage your finances. This all changed for me when I discovered Rocket Money, which is now what I use to track all of my finances and organize them into different categories so I can see how much I'm spending and where it's possible for me to cut back. If you've never heard of them, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps find and cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitor your spending, and lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending like 80 bucks on subscription streaming services and things like that when in reality the number is closer to 200 because they add up and you don't realize you sign up for a free trial and it's turned into a four dollar subscription that you're paying for monthly maybe you're not thinking about it because it's just four dollars but those four dollars over time really add up and you're just losing money on services that you're not even really using. It's really easy to lose track of what you're paying for. And with Rocket Money, it becomes super easy to not only keep track of it, but also cancel those subscriptions with a click of a button all in one place. So if you're like me and you used to use a spreadsheet, manually inputting expenses and income to track your finances, it might be time to level up to Rocket Money and see how much more automated and enjoyable the experience of managing your finances can be. So if you're interested in trying out Rocket Money, you can go to rocketmoney.com slash emotional. That's rocketmoney.com slash emotional to take control of your finances today. All right, babes. <laughs> We've done the dick and cock debate. We've done the audience submissions. <laughs> and <laughs> now, the moment you've all been waiting for, our beef with the Brits, the season finale all right, I'm now do a main accent. The season finale <laughs> of Love Island season 10. It was one wet, hot summer, babes. But now it's over. <laughs> Closing time. <laughs> get your ass back on a plane and get back to Manchester, babes. <laughs> Show me what love can do. Back to You've got 200,000 Instagram followers <laughs> and a brand deal with boots waiting in your inbox. <laughs> you better get home and get to work, babes. Wait, can the British public confirm that boots is the equivalent of CVS? <laughs> like, <laughs> it is. Okay. Boots. Boots. Boots the house down. Boots the house boots. down. <laughs> get back in the villa. All right, so let's talk about the final week of Love Island, and then we'll talk about the final. <laughs> mm. Pissing and farting and shitting and just <laughs> throwing up and screaming. <laughs> That's how I feel about that fucking finale. Most of us had a very bad time with the finale. One of us had a great time, and we'll figure out who that is as we discuss. <laughs> All right. Beginning of the last week of Love Island, we have the families visiting. Yo. It was a whole, blah, a whole lot of hoopla, the way that it always is. Yeah. Um, I really don't usually care about the family stuff, although sometimes it does make me cry a little bit. It didn't make me cry this season, though. I did tear up. You did you? Who? For who? For Jess. Obviously. <laughs> um, for um, Lockin. I cried out a little really? bit for that. Because he thought his mom was It hot? was just so cute. He was just like, oh my god, that's my mom. Like, Didn't it was he just say, so like, look how good my mom looks. There were <laughs> a few he? mouth kisses. There oh. was a few mouth there was. kisses. Did it was serving Brits- Gary V. Do British people kiss people on the mouth? Please confirm in the comments. Well, we watched it. They must. Yeah. The only interesting thing that happened while the parents were here was that, like, right before the parents come in, Scott says to all the boys that he's going to end it with Abby. Hmm. And then Abby's 
once Abby and Scott's parents come in, Abby's parents are like consoling her being like, no, he actually does like you. And like, Abby's don't worry mom, about it. It's just a slow burn. Abby's mom bites her lip. That's crazy. Oh, Scott, it was yeah. so bad. And then Scott's family was basically like trying to convince Scott to continue pursuing Abby, even though it's clear at this point that he wasn't interested. No. So the whole Shouldn't. thing was hard to watch. Yeah. Um, the other thing that happened was that Jess's mom admits that Jess's friends are not the biggest fans of Sammy, which anyone could have told you that yeah, yeah, shocker. shocker i didn't need <laughs> jess's mom to come in and say that i knew that real recognize real yeah, yeah sure. i would say who's a fan of sammy but mm. we have one in the room right now oh, i never said i was a fan of sammy I you were a sammy apologist for sure at minimum because he's hot that's the only <laughs> yeah because he's hot and that's what the show's about i would hook up no with sammy. it's about love <laughs> okay about love. sue me Sammy is hot, but so I'm why that's are you smart. why are you saying this? As far as it'll on go on live television vibes. <laughs> as far as it'll go, I'll say he's hot, but he's not like he I am no, just nothing else. Greater than sign Sammy. <laughs> he, he has nothing Can else. You. His only other redeeming factor is that he's with Jess. Exactly. Alright, we will discuss this later. Continue. <laughs> um then after that, Molly presents zach with a three euro bracelet that she bought at the airport as a sign of commitment <laughs> which sent me to the moon and back <laughs> hated every second she's of it. coming for maya jama's job yeah <laughs> yeah she is that's that's and she's not gonna take of, it all the of the theatrics i like molly here. though i also like molly i like molly and zach i think they're perfect together Oy vey. i don't okay, know okay me like jamie jess words on that okay yes Yes, I do Zach, believe that. Zach got with <laughs> Zach got with it's Katie so cringe. only because Molly left. If Molly hadn't left, he would never have left her for Katie. And that's I, cringe. I am not it personally cringe, a fan of Molly and Zachariah. I do like Molly though. I like Mo Molly. Molly like individually. Kid. Yeah, that's why I like her. Well, I, I, I like, see the energy. I like her with Zach because it's like confusing. Yeah, like it's chaos. Yeah. Like it's like, but it's chaos. But then it's also calm. Like they have, they have like s not as much drama. So like I like. They're not like, gonna last. But they here's the thing: I need to see the TikToks. I need to see her making I him dance in TikToks. That. I also love that like she could make him dance in a TikTok. Also, I like let's be real, he gonna... wants to. That's why he went on yes. Love Island. He wants yes. to be an influencer. Yes. yes, I think he's down bad for her. And I think when she <laughs> probably told him I make TikToks, he's probably like, hmm, that could help me career wise. So I, I do like them together, okay? I'll say it. Also, I think they're but really But th he gives off the vibe of, like, I'm not bothered, and that's so annoying. Like, sure, yeah, you want to be an yeah. influencer, but then, like, own up to it. No, they they both do. Yeah. They both act like they're, like, above yeah. drama, but really it's because they lack communication. Yeah. <laughs> they're no, just not true. talking about it. Yeah. That's true. That's that's all true. But also, I, like... Smug. Like Yes, they yeah, that's what I thought that they were the most smug. They couple. should get the most smug. I did think they were gonna get the most smug. But also yeah. I don't I don't care. I, I still like them together. Yeah. <laughs> They're both smug. Good. Okay, then they do the talent show, which I don't even remember it to be honest. I feel like I was zoned out the whole time. Mitch does a roast that bombs. <laughs> that's Sammy all stands that I on remember. his head. Sammy stands on his <laughs> yeah. head. Like a kid at thinks Balloon animals. Yeah. That was cringe. Whitney and Ty did a rap of mm -hmm. some sort. I skipped that. It's given I'm not bad even gonna lie. Bitch. Yeah, I was really not paying attention while this was going on. I need them Locking to cut the talent show next year, I'll be honest. They cut the baby challenge this year. They got rid of the babies. After season after season of everyone being like, we do not like the babies. They got rid of it. Maybe we need to start doing that with the talent show because I yeah. don't think I need to see it. The talent, These yeah, people the don't have talents. Dumb. You're just forcing them to do random shit. And it's only funny to them because they like know and love each other at this point. So it's funny. Yeah. yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Same. They don't have talents. They have to be taught by producers to blow right. up. We people all know animals. pretty people aren't talented. <laughs> That's no, so pretty funny. Pe pretty people are not talented. See, but this is the thing. If you're, if uh, I wish like if the producers are going to like m teach the Islanders like life skills in order to make them do this talent show at least record that part yeah you know what i mean like if if you i would be more interested in watching a producer teach abby how to make balloon, balloon animals, animals than yeah. actually watching her do it and pretending like she wasn't taught by a producer yeah no pretty people are not talented and that's why everyone says <laughs> i'm not talented just just watching a group of boys trying to learn like sailors knots together yeah 
That'd be fun. Right. Or like that's the part that I want to see. Sammy learning how to stand on his head. I would love that. I want to watch him fall on his head. There was He's one season where they let ages. them grow the grocery store. Yeah. Season I love five. that. Oh, they sent yeah. Anton and fucking Tommy Fury yeah. to the grocery store and Anton was hitting on the fucking yeah, clerk. I thought and that then was he comes back and television. tells everyone that he got her number. <laughs> yeah. Like it was no big deal. He God, got in trouble for him. that because he gave the cashier his phone number and then they got in a huge fight over it. Belle bitched him out. In, and in the incredible. beach club. And none of them can speak Spanish. And he deserved it. No. And so it was yeah. so funny, though. It's fun to watch them trying to speak Spanish. Yeah. Gracias. That season was so good. That that incident specifically was so funny because Anton genuinely did not consider that he was doing something wrong. <laughs> he looked so shocked when he was being called out. Like, that man had no <sighs> thoughts, head empty. I do wish they would send them to the grocery stores more. Yeah. Well, that would be good. Um, I want to see them cook more. Yeah, yeah they're also obviously that. not good at what it. are no y'all can, eating in there? None of the men can Pasta cook. Mash. Yogurt Pasta and berries. Mash. <laughs> Toasties. Yeah. Cheese toasties. One yeah. man frying all of the eggs. Yes. All right. <laughs> then we've got something new happening on the show. A new edition introducing the Grafties, <laughs> an audience voted award show. Which I thought this was a great move on the producer's part. Mm -hmm. Everyone's been complaining that they got rid of the Twitter challenge. I think this was the perfect middle ground between like, okay, we're not going to tell you exactly what the public is saying Mm -hmm. because the public is saying crazy shit, (laughs) but we're now giving the Mm -hmm. audience a vote and letting them in a little bit, letting the Islanders know what just a tiny little taste of what the public thinks. Roll the clips. Rolling the fucking clips, which is what we needed. So the first award is for flirtiest performance. Um, the the nominees are Abby for playing both Scott and Mitch. Uh, Ella B uh, for the kiss clip of saying yeah. saying that uh, that the shame is the last first kiss, last kiss thing that with Ty, um, and then Scott for jumping on Abby post mm-hmm. all of the Mitch stuff whatever and the winner is Ella B which I felt like was obvious mm-hmm. I honestly I'm so tired of the Abby and Scott stuff at this point yeah. I don't care about either of them enough to continue on either of those yeah those points yeah um the next category it's giving plot twist nominee number one was Jess um, telling Josh that Sammy might be the problem, which is why she's always been in the bottom, which oh, is 100%. true. Yeah, it was true. And um, next nominee was Mitchell playing both Abby and <laughs> Ella and telling them the different and the same stories. Messy Mitch. And then Zach having doubts about Molly, or it was sort of cut to yeah. look that way. Um, and the winner is Mitch. And Whitney is cackling this entire time. Was She's you, losing her mind. Was you entertained? As she should. Well, Whitney had the most fun this summer. I, she was more entertained than any of us. I lived for all of her reactions. Because <laughs> yeah. I felt them so genuinely, Well, it's just like, it, even when her mic wasn't, like, the the loud mic, you would still hear her <laughs> yeah. in the background of every single clip. <laughs> I was like, she, she, I felt like she was my voice sometimes. Exactly. Where I would be like, I felt like she was the one reacting in the same way that I was yeah. at home. And I was like, that's our girl yeah. in the villa saying what needs to be said and reacting in the same way that we would. And then when we would have Catherine reacting to Whitney, that was just like yeah. the peak <laughs> reaction. <laughs> the girls. And then... Yeah, while when the clip played of just telling Joss that Sammy might be the problem, Sammy was like, you wouldn't like it if the shoe was on the other foot. And I was like, babe, the shoe has been on the other foot. Four times. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. What are we talking here? Yeah. The I, shoe has been on the other foot many a time. I love how they played those Josh clips as if it was anything similar to what right. Sammy had ever done. Like, just clearly didn't want to entertain this man. No. She was... She was just being yeah. nice to him because he came into the villa at an awful time and decided to set his eyes on a woman who was never going to look at him. Yeah. And I hate that the producers put this clip in there to clearly stir shit yeah. when yeah. anyone with eyes could say 
could see that it was not. Well, the she same. admitted that she did it to make Sammy jealous, and then Sammy got mad at that. But also, like, she, so he deserves that. Like, she, he did so many things to make her jealous. Like, of course, she's gonna retaliate. Like, that's someone comes in for her. Of course, she's gonna make him. Look I jealous. wish she had an Uzi. Like, I wish there I had wish been. I wish there had been someone to turn Jess's head so significantly that maybe Sammy would get his head out of his ass, yeah. but it never happened. No. And he still has his head in his ass. Yeah. And so like, yeah, they're not going to last though. Anyways, whatever. whatever. Then in response to the clip of Mitch telling different stories to both Abby and Ella B, oh, he was like, y'all keep talking about messy Mitch, but that wasn't messy. Mm, referring oh. to only his messiest moment on the show this season. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what are you watching? He is so deluded. He convinced himself that he did nothing it's wrong. It's wild. Because they're sitting there. He's like, see, I told you. And then I was sitting there like, well, what did you say just <laughs> right before that? So then there's some other categories that nothing really comes comes about with. Whatever. Um, then we get to Mad Moves. And the nominees for Mad Moves are Zach for Snog and Katie and Snog Mary Pie. Mm. Ty for telling Ella B to interrupt Abby and Mitch's conversation. Mm. And the moment we've all been waiting for, the tapes we've all been waiting to be rolled. Mitch for telling Abby that he does not see anything with Ella B outside the villa. Which for a while now, Mitch has been saying that he never said. He got in a whole thing where Abby was telling Ella B this and he overheard it and he was like, I never said that, roll the tapes. And Abby was like, we, we will roll the tapes, babe. Bikes. And the tapes have now been rolled. Incredible. And we are seeing that Abby was telling the truth the whole time yep. and Mitch did in fact say that he did not see anything happening with Ella <laughs> B outside the villa. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so then Abby's like, thank God the tapes were rolled. Everybody can see that now I was telling the truth. And then Mitch gets up and accepts his win and gives the world's weirdest <laughs> acceptance speech, <laughs> which starts a fight. Who's ever the pro- whoever the producer's that, that idea was to make them go up there and accept the speech. <laughs> I want to kiss you on the mouth. Yeah, I do want to kiss <laughs> you. It was incredible. What did he say? He got up there and he was like, "Thank you, thank you, everybody." <laughs> He's um, like, "All right, anybody got anything else to say? No, no? you're good. Okay, forever hold your peace. Moving out now." Yeah, I think you're fucking no bad. Yeah. <laughs> Scott calls Mitch a no bad, which no I bad. do need Brits to chime in in the comments because <gasps> it's awful. I I just don't. When I hear no bad, that to me just is funny. No bad. Call back to the dick versus cock debate. Yeah, like, right. I literally thought knob head knob head was just the. British equivalent of dickhead, which is just a silly little thing. Right. To my it wouldn't be that recognize. offensive. Yeah. But Mitch reacted like he was like just he got called a cunt <laughs> on live television. Like is is knobhead the same as Bellend? Because I know Bellend is like the worst thing you could call a man. Yeah. But like is is knobhead also the worst thing you would call a man? British. British. You look like a fucking knobhead. Sound off in the comments. Yeah, I need some info. The, the comments are just going to be dick cock knobhead. Dick, <laughs> dick cock knobhead. Okay, oh, okay. also, <laughs> if if knobhead is the equivalent of dickhead in, in British, then what is in the British. worst? British. Then, 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 then what is the worst thing you could call someone in British? Because, like, <laughs> British. because, like, is cunt, because I pretty sure cunt is not that big of a it's, deal. That's Australian. In Australian, it's not Yeah, in Australia, deal. it's not. Is it also in British not that big a deal? Maybe it's somewhere I, in the middle. Wanker. In British. Wanker. Wanker. I think wanker, that's bad. Wanker is really? horrible, I think. Wanker. Yeah, wanker. Wait, I, need the, I need the comments to sound off. Yeah, rank <laughs> rank each name that you could call someone. Yes. Jogun. I know that's bad. <laughs> what? Jogun. Jogun. With the, with the fuck you. Jogun. Like jogun. Like get fucked. Jogun, babes. Jogun. Yeah, get fucked. Wait, jog on. Is that spelled J O? What is this? That is the middle finger. Like get fucked in British. <laughs> <laughs> I'm genuinely. Which I don't even know why we choose to do this. So I'll be real. Because it's a sleigh. Because <laughs> a sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when people go like this, though. I hate when it's like the thumb is all the way out. 
I can't do that because my hand is broken, everybody. But (laughs) my hand is broken. I can do it. It looks like a compass to me. Like this is serving north, south, east, west. (laughs) I don't get when people do like fingers, like the other fingers up, like this. Oh yeah. I don't get that. Like, do like, a, I feel mine like is the like proper this. way is like. Do a, put your pinkies down. The thumb slightly <laughs> out. Yes. Just don't do this either. That's this scary. is what eight year olds do. They're like, <laughs> this is so serious. <laughs> I just do a subtle. Just An eight year old that just discovered the middle finger for the I first time. What about to front? It. You got to build to it. What about front? <laughs> you what about front? Front. What about <laughs> front middle finger? Front. This is a threat <laughs> no it's not middle thing. finger to the front, <laughs> to the front. all <laughs> fingers down <laughs> that's like smell my finger <laughs> that's like pull my finger <laughs> i don't get that one <laughs> all right so okay. then we get post groff days um whatever ty is mad at Lockin for talking to whitney about what Boo. the boys were saying Whatever, shut up. Don't care. Shut the fuck up. Don't shut care. Fuck up. Don't care. Boring. Boo. Suck an egg, up. Ty. Shut shut Immediately they move past it. Ty apologizes to Lockin. Um, and then Good. tries to talk to Whitney, but she wouldn't let him. Whatever. Good. Literally don't care. Mitch is pissed that Scott called him a knobhead, which is <laughs> the best thing that's happened this week in general. Um and Scott ends up officially ending it with Abby. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Took him so long. About fucking time. Yeah, it took him a long time, but I don't think he had a choice. I would have loved Scott. Stop on me Jordan no. loved Scott. Like, Horn, on know, the go. Let's give her let's give her time <gasps> to respond. Jordan? How do you respond to Scott? Raise your voice, Jordan. Scott accusations. I do like Scott. Sorry. <laughs> no, I just I think he realized his position in the house and at any moment they're gonna vote him out for whatever reason. And he, I mean, he's been hanging on by the skin of his teeth and what, like just the love of the British public. Like yeah. he, he knows it's his time to leave. I also think he wanted to leave at this house. He doesn't fucking like any of these people. <laughs> they don't like him. <laughs> they don't like him and he hates them. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I think it was pretty clear from the beginning that he didn't like Abby, but like that. But and I think he's boring, which means he's like probably a good person. Like if you're boring on reality TV, like you're probably a good person. That's the but consensus. also I don't like him because he's boring. Like just like you're not right for reality yeah. TV, and that makes me not like. But he you. would make out with Abby in bed. So in my defense, the Yikes. only reason I like Scott is that he hasn't committed crimes against <laughs> women on national TV. Okay, <laughs> you know okay. who you are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. Scott apologist in the room. (laughs) Scott apologist is not the worst apologist you could be. Hmm. 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 There's slander being (laughs) happened. (laughs) Being said. Being happened. (laughs) Okay, so then there's a public vote that puts Ella B and Mitch, Molly and Zach, and Abby and Scott in the bottom three, which then their fellow Islanders have to decide who's going home. They, of course, choose Abby and Scott to send home. Um, then the second that Abby is dumped from the villa, Mitch does literally the unthinkable because <laughs> he now is in a position where Abby is gone. It's just him and Ella B. They get to just focus on their relationship and have a good time. He could just enjoy his life for a little bit. Drama over. But this man gets into the bedroom while the girls are getting ready for bed and then tells all the boys that he thinks that Ella B is fake. In the Incredible. Funniest, in the funniest way possible. Incredible television. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? The boys just want to go to bed. They're minding their yes, business. Exactly. They're minding their business. They're putting on their eye masks. And, and Mitch just comes in and says, I think Ella B is fake. I was like, whoa. <laughs> like... There Where are, did that come from? There are three days left. The final dates are tomorrow. What? Like, wh- for what? <laughs> Why? No, but he has not the gift of the God, but the curse. He just <laughs> talks and talks 
and talks. No, because he's a super fan and he's like, okay, I know at this point in the show, everyone's like, there's no drama left to have. All the people who have had drama are going home or they've resolved all their drama. So he's going to risk the only <laughs> relationship he's had in the villa? I think he literally is like a super fan of Love Island. And so he's like, what can I do in this moment? I think every second of every day, he's like, what can I do in this moment to make this entertaining? Yeah. And like, that's how he's played the whole game. And I think at some points it's like, it's been like, what the fuck? Which is the, one of these moments. It's a mm. what the fuck moment. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and obviously he's totally that's, unpredictable. Yeah. And obviously that statement gets it back to LB eventually. I, yeah. I, think, I think he's unpredictable unless you think like, Oh, he's just trying to be like the most crazy, like no. weird I guy. Do, I do not believe for a second that he is masterminding this. He's I not, think he is just like this. No, but I think he thinks he's masterminding yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think he's a mastermind. I think he's dumb as rocks. I <laughs> can't believe he like manages gas meters. <laughs> we should all be scared <laughs> the british public should be really scared though <laughs> it's going nuclear i mean obviously <laughs> he thinks he's doing a good job because he's literally lasted un up until the day before the fucking finale like yeah. he really does think he conned this whole game because he he did not find a single woman who was interested in him sorry ellaby i think you're lying yeah, yeah i agree um and he lasted so then literally the very next day, the final dates start happening and Mitch and Ella B go on the first date. Mitch is literally out of his fucking mind because the mm. night before he's like, Ella B is fake. Then he off oh, 6 a.m. They hit that alarm. They say, Mitch, Ella B, it's time for your final date. They go out on the date and Mitch goes, Ella B, do you want to be exclusive with me? Like a fucking absolute sociopath. <laughs> he is a sociopath. I was shocked. Yeah. And at this point, the fact that he had told the boys that Ellaby was fake has made it around to the other girls in the yeah. house. So all the other girls know that this has been filtering by the time that Ellaby gets back to the house and happily announces to all the girls at the <laughs> fire pit that she and Mitch are now exclusive. Well, the camera cuts to Whitney and Molly and they're sitting there like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so good. So then Whitney ends up being the one to tell Ella B what Mitch said. Also, the boy's reaction to Mitch announcing that he made it exclusive was so me. I was like, the, the reaction that they all had was the reaction that all of us had. Because they were all just sitting there like, uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Well, so how are we feeling about last night? Lockin was like, so... Let's loop back around to a conversation that was open <laughs> eight <Crazy>. hours ago. <laughs> so you still feel like she's fake or what? <laughs> so then Ella B calls Mitch out and she's crying. And Mitch this she's whole time squealing. is like Let's stoic. He is having no reaction to Ella B like audibly sobbing so upset that he's done this. No apology. And then as Ella B is calling me out, he goes, I said that last night, not today. <laughs> yeah, he said that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like. Crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand how that type of behavior could be attractive. Mm -mm. But, but also, like, he's done shit, like, I mean, not like this, but, like, basically. Like, the whole this, time he's the behaved whole this time, way. Yeah, so yeah, also, yeah. it's like. Ella B, you knew this was coming, yeah. girl. You don't even like him, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch deals in absolutes. Yes. And then Mitch gets mad at literally everyone else. And I'm like, but you're the one who said it. Yeah. How can you be mad that it got around when you, those words did leave your mouth? On camera. <laughs> On camera. That's the craziest part of all of this is that it's like, do they for, do they just forget? How could you possibly forget that you're but under 24 Mitch, hour surveillance? Specifically, Mitch acts like he's not on camera at all times. And it's like, you know, you're on camera. Yeah. And so, and, and, and now finding out he's a super fan, I'm like, okay, he knows he's on camera. He's saying these things because he's on camera. Yeah. He thinks he's, he's masterminding this all. He's yeah. saying all this crazy shit because he knows that yeah. he's going to get more airtime because he says, says crazy shit. Right. The, yeah, the Islanders do not 
go to the fire pit to have a conversation on their own volition. The producers say, go yeah. to the fire pit and have a discussion. Yeah. yeah. So like any time that Mitch has said something fucking batshit insane <laughs> in the fire pit is because the producers told him to sit down and say it. And he just goes rogue. Does he it. says whatever comes to his head. My favorite thing though is as he's trying to explain to Ella B is he's like trying to make up reasons in his head for why he said this. Yeah. The reason that he decided on too was good. that he just has too trust good. issues <laughs> and he, like, he was like it was too good I to be true too good to be true <laughs> and that's crazy and i think it backfired on him because the second he said that ella B was like that's a huge red flag <laughs> and i was like he thought that he was gonna get away with saying that and she'd be like oh that's so sweet he loves me so much and she's like are you sure you're ready for a relationship <laughs> i was like it's not gonna work mitch <laughs> It's also, not going to work, babe. He's 27 years old. That like, is crazy. This is a man. <laughs> like, oh, my God. He still lives at home, right? That's the vibe I get at the very least. I would believe it if he was. Um, okay. Mitch is in the comments. No. <laughs> That'd be cool. Oh, my God. I mean, I would actually be excited. <laughs> so everyone goes on their final dates. It's exactly what you think it's mm-hmm. going to be. Ella mm-hmm. and Ty become officially boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> um, then we get like the day before the finale. There's a sports day that happens. It's a three-legged race. And Sammy and Ty are tied to each other. Right, Sammy and Ty? Yeah. And they're running to the finish line. And they're like r- like running straight where Ella is. And Ella tries to jump over their leg and she gets caught and does like the most cartoon ass fall I've ever seen in my life. And then Ty and Ella have like a weird fight that ultimately was nothing because that's how they fight. Yeah. But they did say it's it. just the same Fuck shit different you to time. each other. Yeah. That was kind of legendary though. It reminded me of the conversations that I would have like when I was 12 years old and like mad at the world for existing. <laughs> Ella was like, fuck you. And Ty was like, fuck you too then. And they like slammed the door. And I was like, period. <laughs> I mean, that's most of their fights though. Like Ella literally said, I'm angry and I don't want to talk about it. And you would think that a man like Tyreek would take advantage of that and not ask how she's feeling because yeah. he doesn't care. But instead he gets mad at her for yeah. it and then just makes it all worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like, it would have been very easy for Ella to speak a little bit clearer. Yeah. But also Ty needed to know when to just let it drop and like come back to the conversation the next day. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. Give her space. She wanted space. He couldn't understand that. But also she could have been a little bit clearer with why she was upset instead of just yeah. being like, I don't want to talk about it. But also you tripped your girlfriend. Read the room. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah. Like, let her be pissed about it for, like, a little bit. It was an accident. So it's, like, it's not... It doesn't have to be... She just was having a day. That was the cherry on top. Yeah. Which anybody... That would be the cherry on top for anybody. You're under constant surveillance with a bunch of people for for over the course of two months. She knows it's not a big deal. That's why she's, like, I don't want to talk about it because she doesn't want to turn it into anything, but she's not in the mood for it. Exactly. But he's not reading that properly so and then he whatever. calls her selfish yeah oh yeah he calls her selfish. because yeah he's grown in the past two months but not that much not that so much. funny which did you know that he is um besties with yep what's his face from season seven mm-hmm. Who? childhood besties um, what is his name i see his face and he was in the group voice. the boy group right he has the podcast and he dated what's her face the blonde Wes? Who is the funniest? No. Not Wes. Toby. 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 Season, yeah. season seven. seven. Childhood besties. Yeah. Wow. Which makes so they much play sense soccer to me. Too. Because. You mean football? Fucking whatever. They are very similar. Yeah. It makes so much sense to me that they're friends. Mm-hmm. Toby Good brought us drama too. He did. Mm-hmm. Good for them. He was with the one girl and she was sitting there like Yeah, I love when he her. He came back from Casa More. Yeah. She's like, whatever. I love her. She was so good that season. Um 
Okay, so then Maya Jama comes in, and she is announcing all of the couples who everyone said was least compatible, because when they were on their final dates, they all had to decide which couple was least compatible. <clears throat> Guess who it was? Ty and Ella, <laughs> Jess and Sammy, Molly and Zach, and Whitney and Lockin all voted for Ella B and Mitch. No surprise there. Mm-hmm. Ella B and Mitch voted for Whitney and Lockin. <laughs> So because those two couples are now vulnerable, the rest is left up to the public and the public decides to save Whitney and Lockin and Ella B and Mitch are dumped from the villa. But I will have to say this was the first sign of turmoil that was to come because I suddenly became aware of the force of the Facebook moms Mm. because I wouldn't they have saved Mitch. I saw a lot of Mitch support from screenshots on Facebook that I was unaware of because I am a a Twitter person. Yeah. And suddenly I was aware. It's called X, Jordan. Shut up. (laughs) I haven't updated the app and I will delete it soon enough now that Love Island is over. It's called Threads. So I will call it Twitter. It's called Threads. Threads. Move to Threads, Jordan. Download Threads, Jordan. (laughs) But apparently a lot of the moms of Facebook loved Mitch for reasons I cannot determine. And that's when I suddenly realized that we had a problem afoot. Yeah. yeah that's and crazy. a problem afoot we had. Okay. So now we're at the finale. We've made it here. It's been a long, hot summer, babes. And now we just want to know who's getting a 50K. All right. A massive 50K <laughs> prize. <laughs> so massive 50K. So we, we get here. In fourth place, we've got Molly and Zachariah, which was predictable. We all thought they were going to come in fourth. No surprise. But here's when things start to get shaken up a little bit. Okay? You guys know that I put you to work. All right? (laughs) We were mobilizing the British public Mm -hmm. that we had access to. The British public that is here in the Emotionally Online Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm. They were mobilized. Uh They were given a task. Uh to vote for Ty and Ella Mm -hmm. and give Ty his 50K as he rightfully (laughs) deserves. Mm -hmm. Tyreek carried this season on his back. As an entertainer, lock them up. He's a performer. He deserves like a fucking credit on IMDb Mm -hmm. for his work this season. Mm Mm-hmm. And Over, prison, and oh, a prison sentence, and a prison sentence, but, but also IMDb and yeah. 50k. Yeah, 50K. he deserves all of it. IMDb. He deserves a prison sentence, IMDb, and 50k. Agreed. And an Oscar. Agreed. He deserves all of it. Yeah. Carry it's the season on his back. A crafty ra. We were voting for Ty and Ella. Well, I hate to say that our our the emotionally online <laughs> USA interference did not work. It's it was never going to work, came in third place. So mm, would you guys like to tell me what the fuck was going on there? <laughs> because we should have had mm, a little bit of a bigger influence than that. <laughs> so noted. <laughs> <laughs> so Ty and Helen come in third. <laughs> and they look pissed. They do look pissed. Yeah. They thought they had the journey of the summer. Deservedly so. They thought they were going to win. It makes me feel so satisfied. So then we get to our top two couples. Whitney and Lockin and Jess and Sammy. Now, everyone was convinced that Whitney and Lockin were winning. Yeah. Even though I wanted Ty and Ella to win, I thought Whitney and Lockin were going to win. And I was sure that what I thought was that Whitney and Lockin were going to come in first, Ty and Ella second, Jess, Sammy third, Molly, Zach fourth. Yeah. So Jess and Sammy not being in third was a real shocker to me. Mm-hmm. But at this point, we're like, okay. It's got to be Whitney and Lockin, right? They've already won the popular vote like just a week ago. Yeah. And Whitney has been beloved since the moment she entered mm-hmm. the villa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Lockin gets a lot of love from all the other islanders. And right. me. Like, and from so Jordan. So Lockin's literally done nothing wrong the entire time he's been there. He's just a good guy. He's yeah. a good guy. Good guy, trademarked, copyrighted. Good hot guy. girlfriend. They should vote for like hot girlfriend. The winners should be on their own like best girl best boy who gives a fuck about oh i like that i like that idea itv take (laughs) take note (laughs) take note i only want one willer winner willer Willer. i only want one winner (laughs) yes split up a couple if you have to well this is what they tried to do for many years they finally gave up with trying to make them do that yeah so as you can imagine 
Whitney and Lockin did not win Love Island. <gasps> Shock. Devastating. We were shocked and upset to learn that somehow, Jenny! against literally all odds, <laughs> Jess and that demon Sammy <laughs> have won Love Island. Emotional abuse. Which makes no sense. No sense. But this is when we started doing some digging and some research. And it appears that there is uh, a mafia of <laughs> white Facebook moms. Mitchell moms. That loved Mitch and also loved Sammy. And when Mitch got eliminated, they basically maybe hopped over to Sammy. This is conspiracy theory number one. <laughs> I have a conspiracy. They voted for Jess to win. Because everybody saw how bad Sammy treated her. Mm -hmm. So the money would be like a pillow that she could fall on in the end. I think the truth is that these things are mixed together. Mm -hmm. And also, the British public is racist. Yes. Yes, the British public is racist. I mean, can we finally talk about it? There absolutely is. Because every episode, every first episode yeah. where the British public decides yes. who to pair who together, yeah. it's always yeah. the black, black woman people, and the black, the black man. man. Yes. Thank always. you. I've been saying this. Yeah. Yeah. It was just wild because this really looked like it was going to be the first season where the two final couples were both mm-hmm. people of color. People of color. But then... Something happened. Something went absolutely, totally wrong. And what what are we going to do about it, British public? Because now we're beefing. Everyone is upset. We've all been screaming and shaking and crying for the mm-hmm. last four days. And we love Jess. We love Jess. But, like, yeah. they, Sammy does not deserve. No. Sammy that, doesn't that, deserve Jess. That man's walking away with 25K. Does not deserve 25K. Whitney and Lachlan should have won. They, they should have been the they winners. They should have won. And, like, if any problematic couple was going to win, it should have been Tyreek and Ella. Because, like, no, Tyreek was as Thank problematic you, as Sammy. Like, Sammy was horrible, maybe worse, honestly, than Tyreek. Yeah, because Tyreek. I think he was. Tyreek sometimes said good things about Ella. But he's not <laughs> Sammy, white. Sammy never had a good thing to say about Jess. No. In their literal, the final highlight reel of the couples. I don't think a single good thing came out of Sammy's mouth about Jess. And no. that's the highlight reel. But he was white, so of course they picked him. It's like, what? That's how it feels. That's how it looks. Sorry, British public. Let's be that real. It looks. All of the couples, they rarely say anything that isn't about themselves first. Like, it's true. I'm better because of you. You it's, make me you know, feel like, so good. Yeah. And it's, they're saying nothing about the person themselves. I mean, none of these people are good people. Can we say that? Yeah. <laughs> These are all bad people. Yeah. Overwhelmingly, I think we were talking love. about this. Big love. We were talking about this before. <laughs> like, this has definitely been one of the most entertaining seasons that we've had in a while. But none of these are people that I would want to be friends with. Yeah. No. This is what sets it. Like, I thought that it was such an entertaining season. But the reason why it won't top season five for me is because there's no one that I was, like, major slay. Love and living for you. Yeah. Like, no. th- season five, there were so many, like, women that were like, do not take any shit. Yeah. I will stomp on a man. And I loved them. Yeah. There were so many times that Ella was so close to doing that. And yeah. then she would just crumble. Yeah. Retreat. Yeah. yeah. Her man was telling every woman in the villa to shut up. And she just sat there. She just sat there. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. And I know that I could not hold a conversation with any of these people. I'd be like, I'd be like, and so, and they would be like, <laughs> what's your type on paper? What's so, on what paper? if the cricket could speak to us right now? <laughs> <laughs> and is the cricket Broski. in the room with us right now? <laughs> Broski. <laughs> you couldn't hold a conversation. So do we think if Mitchell stayed, he would have won. No. No. No shot. Yeah, I, I just, hope not. I just think it was a small enough group that once one of them got out and they moved to the other, yeah. it was enough with also the push of people yeah. really loving Jess, Jess and yeah. also just the fact that the British public yeah. is racist. All of these three things combined to bring enough power. And the, by the power of three. Because <laughs> it was a close <laughs> vote. They, they released the percentages yeah. and it was like 34% Jess and yeah. Sammy, yeah. 26 Whitney lock in 23 yeah. and then 10. And last season, the winner had 60 something yeah. percent, like yeah. literally double what Justin Sammy had. This so year. it was close. It wasn't like 
they won by a landslide. It was they snuck their way in there accidentally underneath our noses. Yeah. Well, Sammy, when you break up with Jess, don't you dare. No, no. Jess Suck those up. words back in your mouth right now. Jesse will break up with. I'll Jess. let you nibble on my nubble. Stop! Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what? You would Stop. not let him nibble on your nubble. Oh, I would. I've said this from. from Stop. Go back to the last pod. <laughs> Don't even open that. I thing. said. I said. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I wouldn't let it go past. I've got to say, hold on. Your mic just died. And. Thank God. <laughs> I'm in silence. <laughs> Give me your mic. Were you silent? Were you silent? Were you silent? Your mic <laughs> died too. <laughs> You're, neither of those mics work. Then I want to know. <laughs> so with that, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. That's the end of today's episode. We're all distraught about Love Island. Let me know your thoughts and how you reacted. Actually, you know what? Right now, I'll play the reaction clip of when we were watching some finale i already had it spoiled for me at this point so this is really their reaction to the finale the winners of love island are oh my god no, 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 no. No. Jason We did watch Love Island in a hot tub, um, which maybe was a callback to Sammy's first dates, which were in a hot tub. That's like fate when you think about it. I hate that it happened this way, but it did. So, oy vey, how are we going to move forward with this, British people? I recommend a ukulele apology video to start. Some of you need to start making admissions right now. Who voted for Jess and Sammy? Do you know someone that voted for Jess and Sammy? They need to read white fragility. <laughs> Those mics are dead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Drink a twee. Have a good life. Bye. 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 And, and I'll I'll see you guys next week. Love you forever. Goodbye. Okay, it's your turn. Truth or dare. <laughs>